Some honest truths about money in your 20s. The number one way that I've made money, uh, whether it be having a lot of money, making money, income, money with your friends, money while dating, where money gets spent when you're 20. For background, I'm 26, name's Brian, I've worked mostly relatively high income jobs, started out in banking, now work in crypto. I've been fortunate enough to not have student loans coming out of college, which I think is kind of the baseline of thought here. That really changes the game, which goes to this first point about when you start hitting 25, 26, so mid 20s, you start seeing vast differences between people who have had lower income jobs or have started in unfortunate cases and that divergence becomes wider and wider and wider. I see a lot of that when I reunite with friends that I haven't seen in four or five years since college or even since high school and the certain life circumstances are just drastically different. This matters I think because these drastic differences start accruing and it starts applying towards the various costs you have when you're 20. So me alone, ever since I turned 26 specifically, I am on a very crappy insurance, uh, especially compared to what I had before under my dad's insurance as I turned 26, thanks Obama. And the reality is that everything costs money. I had physical therapy costs money, going to the doctor is just copay costs money, paying for gas costs money. Everything just costs money, it takes money. Of course, a lot of this has to do with where you're living. If you're living in New York City with $200,000 is very different from living in Oklahoma with $75,000. Cost of living, very, very important. But of course, many young people, yabbies, live in these metropolitan areas which are very costly and the cost of life, cost of living is attributed to such levels. Another thing that I've noticed is that a surprising number of people in my age and perhaps more live paycheck to paycheck even though they're relatively high income. I'm not talking about people that work minimum wage jobs. People that live very well in terms of getting good salaries, working at big companies, live paycheck to paycheck. The number of people that I know that are almost 30 and above that have almost nothing in their bank account, I'm talking about literally nothing, I've seen their savings account, is striking and also prominent, like a lot more than you think. And these are people that have worked six figure jobs for 10 plus years, uh, at least five years that have nothing in their bank account and didn't really come up with that much student loans or are even paying the student loans off, which tells me that they're going and going above what they should be. And I think a lot of this has to do with the New York City or metropolitan lifestyle that they're living. I see a lot of them going to bars every weekend, which is easily a couple hundred dollars, going on dates, a couple hundred dollars, buying Starbucks coffee every single day, which they should not be buying, six, seven dollars a day, maybe multiple times a day, going to these music festivals, also going to these trips, not living very smart. All of which to say, that's your fault. Uh, if you're making high income and student loans is not biting you in the ass, and you don't have a family to support, but you're doing all these dumb things and then you complain later that you have no money, that's your fault. Um, and I think that's far more uh, abundant in the 20s than I thought. And I think a lot of it comes from poor education or poor management of money. Just a fair warning, as you make money, you should really somewhat budget or think about how much you're saving because that number of times I've seen people, I would say it's more frequent than people that save. There's more people that have no money than there's people who have money, which is an obvious fact of life, but you should try your best to not become one of those people as you start making money, especially for high income. Make sure that you're maximizing things and saving for the future. That goes to my like recommendation of you shouldn't be buying Starbucks three times a day and not going to these music festivals and traveling once a year and these drastic erotic locations and taking four girls out on a date and going on weekend outings to these bars and clubs and buying tables. Even if you're high income, unless you're pulling millions and millions of dollars a year, which is 0.001% of people in their 20s, you should not be doing that. And the reason why I'm emphasizing this is I've seen too many people fall to this because they obsess over this New York lifestyle. I think a lot of them think that they're living a lifestyle of someone else when they're not actually at that level yet. And then they find out later on, 29, 20, 30, 31, and they're like, holy crap, I have, two grand in my savings account and three grand in my 401k that I started when I was uh, first introduced to the company and never really contributed, you're screwed. Like, the, the, yes, you have infinite possibilities. I think marriage, when you combine accounts and work together can somewhat help, but you should save. You should really save. And I've, I think that's something that in your 20s, if you don't make a habit out of, it's certainly not gonna happen in your 30s. I've seen people really taper off and lose their thing at, at age 30 and above because they didn't save on their 20s and they're not able to even think about creating a family because families take money. So I think 20s is the time, of course, enjoy yourself. And I think there's no desperate need to save 80, 90%. It's just not possible, especially if you're not high, high, high income. This really hits me. And I, I know that there's arguments that it's a lot harder for us given the market dynamics or whatever, but overall, 
it really emphasized how hard our parents' generation worked and our grandparents' generation worked and how impossible it is just to be an adult because you want to chase these things. I was hard on people earlier, but you want to buy the Starbucks coffee. You attempted to go to these music festivals and go on these trips. And some people are more like that than others, which I, I, I respect to a certain degree. But it really makes you think like, how did our parents do it? How did they afford houses? And of course it was cheaper back then. You could all hear all those things. But even then, I think it's miraculous and really makes you rethink and thank your adult people around you more and the opportunities that they allowed you to have. And I think you need to have that mindset in your mind and try to build for the future and make sure that you are also living that legacy, which I think the 20s, you might think is too young for that, but I actually think it's the best time to do that because your money accrues. This video is not meant to be a finance recommendation video of any sorts. I'm not gonna tell you to go invest more. Actually, I might at the end of the video, but th it's more to just really reemphasize that in your 20s, this stuff matters. And the things that you do in your 20s, not necessarily dollar amounts, but the habits that you end up making for yourself are the things that you're gonna keep doing in your 30s and your 40s to curate a life for yourself and your family. So while you are able to only manage for yourself. I think taking risks, bold risks, bold, big bold bets to make yourself succeed is important, but you should always have a backup plan. And again, I'm re-emphasizing after seeing too many people have no money in their accounts past their 20s, save in your 20s. Like this is, I can't emphasize enough. Keeping up with your friends, keeping up with the Joneses as they call it in the old days, but keep up with, keeping up with your friends and keeping up with your partner, I think is so important. That shouldn't be the sole goal of making money, but you feel it when you become the lowest income person in the friend group. And I think that should be positive motivation. I don't think you should, we should angle this in this toxic way. You're like, oh, you're trying to compete. You are all gonna be able to enjoy life better if you and your friends do well together. It doesn't mean to beat them or be the highest earner there. You're gonna have that one friend who like struck it rich or is the banking hardo that's making, you know, hundreds of thousands in bonuses and the trade-off is you have better work-life balance. All those things are fine. I, I'm talking more about people that are falling behind because they're not trying or they think that the future holds something bigger for them without them trying. I think you're gonna really start feeling like you can't participate in the things that your friends are doing. You can't go to the nice restaurants that they may be partaking in. Maybe they wanna go on a trip and you just simply can't because you can't afford to do so. All the things are gonna start mattering. And I think catching up is less important and more of aligning and being level set with the people that you care about is the most important. It doesn't mean that you have to chase the cloud and be rich altogether, but if your friends are making 75K, I think it really helps to also make 75K, that together you guys can be at the same level, same extent of doing activities. This also flows over to your significant other. Of course, you wanna provide and you want to be able to fun, fun things together, but it's also the level at which it's not gonna be fun, especially if you're a college started or even high school sweetheart kind of relationship. As that disparity grows and grows and grows, it's not gonna be fun. Uh, you're not gonna be able to afford the same things together. And the types of conversations that you're having about the activities that you wanna do are different. Um, and I've seen this live in front of me for couples that uh, seem to claim, you know, love is everything. It is to an extent. And I think it's pretty cynical to think that these things matter, but realistically, there's nothing that you lose by trying harder and to make a little bit more or to match those that are around you so that you can go all together. And this is me coming from a 26 year old, having seen relationships, uh, even friendships, kind of wither away that is unfortunate and I wish uh, they knew beforehand that these things mattered and it really could have been resolved by then. That is all to say, my only recommendation here is that I've been in banking, I've been in high income, I've done crypto, I've done content, I've had all these different side hustles or whatever to make money. The number one way that I've made money is still, at the end of the day, early S&P 500 investments. Like I, I, this is almost like basically financial advice, but for legal reasons, not financial advice, that is by far the greatest return. Like since 21, since my banking internship, whatever, investing into the S&P 500 through a mutual fund, ATF or whatever, the only real true way I've made good money. So if you're in your early 20s, even if you're mid 20s, late 20s, early 30s, go do that right now because that is what is going to at least get you to everything that I just talked about and more. I, I, I really just wanna hit this home. I'm making this video solely out of desperation on your behalf, if this is something that really hits home for you, get that going, invest and, and prepare for that future because 20s go like this and 20s is when many of these things in my opinion are really decided for you to enjoy your 30s and this thing is only gonna get wider and wider and wider. The friends who did these things, who didn't buy the Starbucks every single day, who didn't go on these music festivals but invested into S&P instead are gonna be enjoying their life together in their 30s with their kids, going on trips together, having nice dinners, and inviting people over to their houses, which you can't afford. I really just can't highlight that enough and I hope that this really hits home. Again, 
I am not a full-on expert here, but having lived through half my 20s now, I can't highlight enough how much of a world of a difference that makes in terms of comfort and being able to really live life. I hope I didn't scare you guys. I hope I didn't piss any of you guys off if you guys have no savings. There's always a restart available. I think that's the beauty of the United States, but just keep going and, and make sure to save. Take advantage of your 20s. Early investments, early savings really matter, and I can't highlight that enough. Thank you guys for watching. I'll come back with more honest thoughts about being 20 and more, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Let's go.